Uh, next one is uh, Tom's Town Double Oak Bourbon. It's 45% APV. This one is from Kansas City. Like I said, your your current home city. Yeah. And uh, the story. I should say the story on this. Oh, did you show the bottle? I, yeah. Oh, I dig it because it is. It looks like a 1920s bottle, and that's what they were going for. Kind of the whole uh, Great Gatsby feel. Yeah. With it, and I'm like, I, it, you know, not everyone spends a lot of money on a unique bottle. And I'll be honest, sometimes that will catch my eye, and I might just buy it because of the bottle shape. Yes. I bought a, a Border Bourbon from Wisconsin because it had, like, a wax dip top, and it had, like, a little leather piece on it and stuff. And I'm like, sold. And I'm like, I don't know anything about it at the time, but I'm like, ah, you got me with marketing. <laughs> but uh, this and... Woodhead Spirits, uh, Tomstown and Woodhead Spirits both have fantastic websites. Just yeah. really well done. And Tomstown gives you a background of how they came came to knowing or pick out the name, basically. Um, I'm going to go through it maybe like two or three minutes um, of it just because it's really named after Tom Pendergrass, who started a wholesale liquor in 1919. Then we all know 1920, the evil prohibition started. Um, he wasn't happy with it and still wanted to basically be, you know, a distributor and a producer. So in 1921, um, he's, Kansas City starts to get known as Tom's Town already because he doesn't care about the laws. And he wants to basically put into effect, we're the city uh, known as the Paris of the Plains. You come here where you can have, you can drink. You can gamble. You can go to jazz clubs. You can hang out and have a good time. So he he even in, in around 1921, I think it was 1923, he, he touches a lot of people since he kind of starts a political machine to kind of keep this rolling in a direction. He picks Harry S. Truman, who was then a haberdasher, to run for the first uh, administrative court post for the county. And then he all, the later he helps Truman become a U.S. senator. So he start touching presidents and kind of launching yeah. their careers. That's exciting. Now, think of him. I wanted to think of him as kind of like Kansas City's Al Capone. Yeah. It's kind of, kind of the way I looked at him. Because in 1925, he starts to shape the city government so that the mayor's office has, like, no control. Yeah. yeah. Like, the city manager has all the control. And then he runs his own man as the city manager <laughs> to take it. So by that time, like I said, Kansas City was known as the Paris of the Plains. And his like his direct quote for like why they would do this is because the people are thirsty. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I just really like that. I thought that was neat. So by the time 1932 rolls around, he's in control of the police department. And he's starting to replace the basically the other competition um, and elbowing them out and starting like the full political machine at that point. Um, then 35 by 1935, um, there's more clubs in Kansas city that serve booze and have, and people having a good time per capita than any other place in the world. At that point, there's over 300 different jazz clubs, bars, taverns, whatever, all, all going on at that point. And then, sadly, I don't want to say sadly because I'm sure, you know, people got hurt in the process, but it just was a very – he's ballsy as hell. That's all. And sometimes I like to give credit to people who are ballsy as hell throughout history. Um, Maurice Mill uh, Milligan was the U.S. attorney, and he kind of forces Tom – to plead uh, tax evasion. Once again, like Al Capone, if we can't get you for what you really did wrong, you made way too much money for, for only having like five nightclubs. You just, you just don't make that much money. And poor dude goes to jail for like 18 months and things kind of fall apart on the, on the political machine. So then fast forward 2015, Steve, and I'm going to say his name wrong, Reaver and David Epstein, I don't think he's any rela relation to the other Epstein, so we're not, 
We're not going to make any things there. Founded Tomstown. Steve <laughs> was the great uncle of uh, the Milligan, the, the attorney that put Pendergrass in jail. And David's great grandfather, Herman, was a rival bootlegger who got elbowed out of the business by Tom. So I just thought it was neat that these two guys that both have heritage, like kind of of their own and could name it their own thing, were like, no. The, he was the king at that point, and we're, we're going to run with that because we're still in Kansas City. So I, I, just the history with that. And, and if you go online, it's it's way more in depth. But I don't know. I just I just love a story like that. Yeah. He was, I mean, definitely corrupt as hell, but he, he got shit done. Yeah. <laughs> and he got shit done. He's like, no, we're going to have booze here, and we're going to have a fun – it's basically he didn't want to stop selling booze and get a different job. Yeah, <laughs> it was yeah. the whole and, thing. Like, no, he, I like doing this. His big thing was he had a had a concrete company and and all he just happened to get all the contracts, you know, for all the work and and it expanded up. I think it got up into Omaha too, and and he just yeah he ran everything. And then but once he was once he got sent away, then people realized, oh, we don't have to listen to this guy, <laughs> you know, and and now he doesn't have any power. But he, but he had everything. I mean, he had. Like you said, he had the police department. He had all these people in his pocket. I I will say from native Kansas Kansas City, but from from the accounts that I've understood, is that Harry Truman wasn't corrupt under his you know in in his pocket, um, but he was always grateful for the fact that Pendergast you know brought him up. But he wasn't he wasn't one of his puppets, and and which I I, I think that's. If it's true, it's cool. You know, if it's not, whatever. You know, it's another political story. But, but yeah, dude, dude was he was corrupt. Lived in a big mansion. He ran the city out of a small office downtown. <laughs> and, I mean, it was. It was like well, it was like two blocks away from where like his club was too. It was like yeah. just oh, it's just over here. I can walk over there and see what's and, going on. And the so, distillery is just down the road or down the street from where his office was, where he ran all of his stuff. Well, and now that you mentioned the whole concrete company, that makes me a little fearful of who's buried in the roads. Just, so, you know what? There was a, away that way a lot. There, there was a big deal about that. The, the, uh, there's a, a, a creek that's really run off that runs through the plaza area in Kansas City, and the legend was was you know because he of course got the bid to to concrete it back in the day was that the people that opposed him were underneath it. <laughs> but in the, uh, I think it was the late eighties or I think it was late eighties. They had redone a lot of that Creek and they're like, there are no bodies. <laughs> but, I thought it was going to be like, um, Oh God, who is that? I can't remember who the one guy was back in the day, but he like, basically I thought they might go out there and like do like the little sonic charge thing where they do like the little mini dynamite, and be like poof. And you can see what's down below it. And they're like, Oh shit. <laughs> Yeah, there's like 40 people in this road and <laughs> nah, we don't want to we don't even really want to dig it up we're just going to build a highway over here and go around <laughs> this um but yeah so the double oaked bourbon is aged two years it's 45 percent alcohol by volume first it's aged in white american oak and then aged again in a combination of french and american oak staves 62% corn, 36 rye, 2% malted barley. Um, like I already mentioned, the I dig the bottle on its own. Like yeah. it, they 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 played towards a certain time frame, and I think they really fell into it and and really did a good job with that. Yeah, I agree. Hmm. It's a little light, a little bit lighter than I thought, but 62% corn. I can I can see that. It's yeah, it's real grassy. Yep. You're right. There's a little bit of green note, but you're like grassy note, not like green barrel note, like definitely like, and not hay and like, but like a green grass. There's a, and I get a, a weird, a weird perfume that I, I put in my notes. It's kind of reminds me of like a kind of an, kind of an old lady perfume, but not that rank stuff that they use, you know, cause their, their smelling senses are gone. It's just like that really weird, faint, cheap perfume. Yeah. I don't mean that in a bad way. No, I get that, but uh, that that other perfume that you were mentioning, the old lady like layered on, that used to make me sick. Like if 
I if I was a shopping with my mom and some old lady was wearing that like heavy stuff, I was allowed to like leave the store and go up to the arcade. And I just started getting sick. She said, "You can go." And now you look for that in your whiskeys. <laughs> oh God, no! God, no. I'd still be the same way. I'd put it down and be like, "This is yours," and I'm gonna go get a different bottle. I'll be back. <laughs> but no, that. Yeah, I I get you. Like it is like a perfumey, like not quite herbally, but no. It's like it's like a stale perfume. Yeah, and I can't like pick a flower out. I'm not adept at flowers, but I can't. But it does definitely like a light perfume to it. And it's not it's not heavy. Like it's it's the nose is kind of similar more to the single cast nation, but yeah. different. But it's still but light like that. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, and, and yeah, like I told you, I when this this came out, it's a. Uh, I really wanted to hate it just because I thought this is just one of those things where you're like, oh, okay, come on, you're putting this thing out and you're going to have a half ass whiskey and it's, you know, it's going to be okay. But it's, I, I think going into it very negative <laughs> it helped because it's like, you know what? It's pleasant. It's very yep. pleasant. And we talked about that with me where sometimes if something, a lot of stuff, if something's so overhyped, I almost expect too much out of it. Mm -hmm. So I go in and it could still be good. And I'm like, this sucks. Like yeah. for the first, like two times I try it, I'll be like, I don't know what everyone else was seeing. And it still could be, it could have been fine or a good whiskey, but I was like, everyone had me thinking, Oh, what's up here. I'm going to praise it. I'm going to go get, you know, three more bottles, share it with everybody. Yeah. But you're right. It's almost, I like stuff if it's under the radar more before it pops up like that yeah oh and i'm sorry ben i didn't mean to force you to kind of drink your last drink to hold back the the whole restraint of, of bringing that up I, I didn't mean to upset you <laughs> oh yeah this is on the nose this is actually really pleasant it almost reminds me more of like a a scotch a little bit like with that perfume note, yeah. It's like on the, on the sweet on the Leclerc, corn note. On the Leclerc scale, it's nice. It's nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can tell it's definitely more corn dominant. It you get a, a really a little more heavier sweet note in. It. The rye kicks in there. Yeah. I'm not going to say I get too much of the malted barley, but it's only 2%. So that's yeah. not a lot in there. No, it's a little, just a little nutty and then just a little spice. And yeah, the spice just kind of, the spice stays a little bit. Exactly. That's what I'm getting now after it left a bit. It's still, it's more of the rye spice sticking around than barrel, maybe a little bit of barrel note, but it's more rye spice because it's on the top of my tongue and I'm yeah. not getting it oily on the sides yeah. or down my throat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Yeah. It's like you said, I'm like, I, this is, it's even on the taste, it's a nice whiskey and I'd be okay with drinking this. It could be, yeah. it could be around for an everyday drinker, but it's not something that I, being on the vastity of saying that I'm going from the West, I'm not going to say it's a, a must have, but it's definitely worth trying because it's not, it's not bad. And it, it has some really nice notes to it. It, it is. Yeah. I, I, I'd, I'd like to try it in a Manhattan. That's one of the things I do want to do. Mm. And, and I, I have been making uh, pre-mixing Manhattans and then sticking them in the fridge, which if you haven't done that, it's, it's so good. It marries and chills and everything. But pouring a Manhattan out of this bottle, I think it'll look pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> and like I said, it fits the time period. You're like, it completely hmm. fits. Yeah. But yeah. It, 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 it hangs gets around bright. I, 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 there's a little citrus from like halfway through. Yeah. When you get the rye spice, like that pops up and then it drops into the rye. Yeah. This is, this is like, I can see what you said. Like, yeah, this was surprising when you're like, I almost want to be frustrated with it. And you're like, yeah. oh, 
you know, you guys did a decent job. You did a nice job with yeah. this. Yeah, I mean, the, you know, cheers to them. They, I, I was, I was expecting a shitstorm. I really was. It's like <laughs> this, is, this is gonna suck. And and it was. And first time I tried it, we were at an event, and it was. It was like, oh, I'm gonna go get a whiskey, and we stood in line forever to the one bar that we could go. And they're like, well, we have Crown and we have Tom's Town, and it was like, really. <laughs> and and like fine, I'll try the Tom's Town, and, and like this is this is not bad. It wasn't bad at all, and went back again. And so yeah, I prompted definitely prompted the bottle. It's like all right, I was I was yeah. pleasantly surprised. You got me. You got me on that one. Yeah. And oh, and this one, um, they do have some other releases. I think this one just came out this year earlier this year. Um, from what I did, but I could be inaccurate. But I think this was, came out earlier this year. Um. Uh, yeah, that was really nice. Oh, and let's see here. Benjamin says he's going to be getting one shipped to him here in a little bit. Nice. That's nice. I was going to say um, this one's good. I'd assume a couple of the other ones that, that they have are probably going to be along the same line. You're not – usually when you find a distiller, it's really you find some one thing that was great and the rest of it's not. Um, um so like I said, Mike, I thank you for being on the show. Everyone in the chat, Benjamin, Brad, Arthur, I'm sure there might be one or two people I'm missing right now. Thanks for showing up. We appreciate I appreciate that. And we look forward to seeing you guys on Wednesday night. All right. All right. And remember, from my den to yours, it's not the size of the den that matters. It's the love of the whiskey. Cheers. Cheers.